Hey folks, welcome back to Modern Life Podcast. Uh, my name is Tabby. I've got Sam here with me. Hey guys. And Stacy. Hello. We're doing a pretty special episode. It's going to be released on the 30th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. And for that, we chose to do Goodbye Leaning. You know what? I was looking at the title today and it's Goodbye, comma, Leaning, exclamation mark. So I think the title of the movie is <laughs> Goodbye, Leaning. <laughs> <laughs> Just using, <laughs> just speaking the English language correctly. <laughs> it's a movie that came out in 2003. 2003. It's got a little uh, baby face Daniel Brühl, who. That's right. Uh, was, what was he in? He was in, uh, he was in Rush. The he Last was Avengers in, yep. movie, right? He was the Gorgeous. bad guy. Or, or Bastards. He, oh, no, no. He was, no, he was the bad guy in the. The Captain America Civil War, which who is basic—it's basically an event. Who movie. knows? Yeah. Who can keep them all straight? A lot of people, fans are very good at that. <laughs> but we will get back to him. If you guys don't know, we do have a new website up: modernlifepodcast.com. dot mm-hmm. Everything's categorized there. You want to hear us talk about movies? Boom, it's all in one section. You want to mm-hmm. hear us talk about video games? Boom, it's all there. You want to hear our interview with George Clooney? Boom. <laughs> it's coming it's up. Not uh, <laughs> we're still talking with his uh, team. Yeah, we're still in touch with his publicist. It's going to happen soon. <laughs> um, no, seriously, it's all there. Um, we got a beautiful new website up. And yeah, everything's always posted on YouTube. Everything's on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. It's on Stitcher too. Instagram, Twitter. Instagram. Well, the podcast isn't up on Instagram, but we're There's up a on link Instagram. There. Everything's there for you guys. All right, wow. I want to stop with the excuses. I don't know where to find you. Uh, <laughs> what? People come up to me all the time. Oh, oh listen right. to the podcast. People on the street. I don't know where to find it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all there. Uh, um, <laughs> anyways, let's get into it. Gonna do uh, some modern, some modern thoughts. Um, I'm gonna start because I don't think I ever start. My modern thought relates directly to our life here. So Tabby, Stacy, and I have been house hunting because we have to move because of several reasons, and we live in Las Angeles, <laughs> and we don't need a giant house. We just need a decent sized house for it. It's gonna be five people total. And for five people total here in L.A., in the valley, which is right above L.A., but part of L.A., you're looking at at least three grand for a house, but it's going to be like a house out of the It movie, right? (laughs) Definitely out of a slasher film, one of them at least. (laughs) So we've been been lucky enough to, like, have a really good rental situation that's way better. We're paying way less than the average person here in L.A., and we now have to move, and it was, like... I knew it wasn't going to be pretty, but just the shock of the garbage of homes that was out there that we had, like, people were asking 3200 a month for a house that was, like, built in the 50s, and they haven't done anything since to it. There's, like, a microwave there from the 60s. There's mold. There, like, the floor is... It, I don't even... Well, that house was in such a nice neighborhood, and I, it was... We were driving through it, and we're like, wow, this is so nice, and then we drive past this one house, and we're like, ooh, what happened there? And then, of course, it's the house that we're going to look <laughs> yeah, at. Yeah, the, the pictures looked okay, and then we drive in the neighborhood, and I'm like, okay, I think this might be... After seeing, like, five homes, I'm like, okay, this looks promising. And yeah, then the house we pull up to just has garbage piled in front of the house, and all the windows are like boarded up it's not it's got these wood shutters on the outside but they're permanent and it's basically boarded up um yeah oh my god it was just we we finally we did find a place a few days ago but man the garbage we had to just swim through to get that's your modern thought that is my modern thought (laughs) where i just we're in such like we're in this bubble here in california where it's just 
this is normal out here and it's just not normal and when we finally found just the most basic cookie cutter home it that that's so nice it was like the palace of versailles <laughs> yeah it's like i'm living like in the white house <laughs> But it's just the most basic house. But just to be able to find that for a decent price is such a unicorn that it's like, oh, my God, we found heaven. But it's just the most basic, boring house. It wasn't just the houses, though. It was also like the attitude of the owners of the house. Like you ask them about a broken chandelier or a broken like you know, cabinet and they're like, we're not fixing it. It's like mm -hmm. that's the thing. So I fixing it. So I've had my real estate license out here for quite some time. And that is just a thing I found over and over again. People out here don't, there's not really a sense of detail to the house. People like you have a little bit of rust on a light fixture. People don't care. You know, there's always like dust and cobwebs on the outside of home. Like people just don't, it's just not a thing that matters to them here, it seems like. I feel like there's no pressure. I feel like because there's so many people that are in need of housing out here and oh, are willing yeah. to do anything to get the housing, that they don't feel pressured to keep the house up. It's like, I just feel like we all in California need to just like stand up and be like, you guys need to start taking care of us or we're not paying these prices. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to happen. What do you mean? That's so, up to know. individual landlords. <laughs> oh, we need more insane. Ron Swanson's out here. I, it's just... it. The thing, what it's is con what is considered normal out here is just absolutely mind boggling, and it's very upsetting. And <laughs> I stand by that statement. Stacy, what you got for modern thought? <laughs> okay, so my modern thought is just kind of a shout out to Nike. Uh, Nike's been doing a lot for climate change, and especially right now with President Trump denying that climate change even exists and and jumping out of the Paris Agreement. I just want to shout out to a company hey, that's like... What is Nike doing? Nike is taking a zero admissions rule and they're kind of standing up against climate change. And there's like this whole thing with like the ice cups are melting and it's opened up all these like ways to like go through the Arctic much faster across seas. And they're them and a couple other companies are saying that they're like going to like not use those routes because it's really damaging to the environment because those routes are already at a high sensitivity because their waters are, you know, increasing in temperature so rapidly um, that if they had a bunch of like shipping stuff going through there, it would like, again, hurt the environment even more. So they're like basically saying they're not going to go use the Arctic um, passways at all. And then on top of it, they're doing like this whole campaign to like fight against climate change. And they're basically saying they're going to be a zero admissions and they're going to make all these changes to like They tell all, all the kids in the sweatshops to stop just, farting. Okay. <laughs> Look no up that, emissions. just for the record. Look that up. And they have like done a lot of change on that too and like for, like raise their wages. Mm. I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah, but all that is okay, too, Nike. too outside pressure. It's not because Nike is such a benevolent... I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is that you know, that was something that they, obviously they did this stuff in the 80s and in, in 90s where they got hit the most with that. And since then, they've been trying very hard to like change their image and like make better changes. So you can't really punish a company forever for something that they did before, as long as you see improvement. That's good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sure. right now, them taking a stand on this when they don't need to, even though I know it's a public image thing, regardless, it's still like more companies need to be doing this. So because even though the even though we're saying they don't have to, it's nice to see companies take more responsibility, I guess you could say. So right, just a like little shout out. At the end of the day, does the motivation matter? Like if it's coming from the company or from public pressure? No, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't matter to me as long as change is occurring. So changes. <laughs> Tell me what you got. Um, okay, so relating to the movie that we're gonna talk about, I looked up the linguistic differences between North and South Korea, because it's something I find really fascinating and how hmm. North Korea is kind of stuck in this time capsule where S right. South Korea, of course, is getting all these English loan words and, you know, they're big in the um, global market right now, too. So mm -hmm. their language is just evolving at a much faster rate and how people who have finally escaped, it, for them, it's so embarrassing to have a North Korean accent and there's a lot of stigma against them. So they try mm. to they try to hide it and they try to assimilate and learn. All, basically, it's not learning a whole new language but learning all this new vocabulary it's weird that they would have a stigma be like oh my god like holy crap you made it across the right, border congrats 
from what I looked up, they they face a lot of discrimination and yeah, just how to not just adapt to a language, but the system of capitalism and how to relate to other people. And yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of sad, but also it's also interesting. And I think we see that reflected in the movie too at the very end when they have that scene where it's like, oh, we're spoilers. Calling, we we're calling it an astronaut, but in the east mm-hmm. they call it a cosmonaut. Interesting. Yeah. Well, North South Korea is very much like East West Germany. Well, no, not, it's not that bad. It wasn't that bad in Germany. No, no, yeah. I, I know, but yeah, but I'm just saying as far as just like splitting the, the, up a culture, splitting up a culture, and then you have here's one side that is so outdated, and then all this innovation is happening right across the border over like mm-hmm. I don't, mm-hmm. as far as that similarity. But yeah, having said that, let's get into the movie because this movie is about. Well, to an extent, East and West Germany, that time period. Um, where do you want to start with this? What, do you want to give a synopsis? You're better with synopsis than I am. I'm going to let you take the lead on that. It's 1989. The story of a young man. The year I was born. <laughs> um, and he's him and his family are living in East Germany. And when the wall comes down, his mother has been in a coma and she can't be um, excited by anything. So they take her back home and create this yeah, alternate a, a coma reality. that was caused by heart attack. That right? her son caused. Right. So she just, she can't, no excitement for this lady. So they just keep on pretending that it's East Germany. And she was changed. very, she was very committed to the socialist, to the socialist party. So knowing if she would find out that the wall came down and all that went away, it would probably break her heart and it would be too much excitement and she would get another heart attack. So they move her into back in the apartment and they make it look like it all was before and they just keep pretending like, yeah, it's 1988. She was asleep in a coma for eight months though. So there's like been eight a months, huge, yeah. it was like eight months of like just innovation and change. So like everything right, like in the rapid, world is rapid, rapid change. change. So everything is very, very different outside. I, I don't know. I thought that was important. <laughs> yeah, I actually looked up the just the changes that all of East Germany had to go through, and they also actually had language classes to assimilate into. Oh, really? Um, yeah, West How West weird. Germany, because it's not like two cultures coming together. It's like the West is right. now the standard, and the East has to catch sure. up. And I think that's so brilliant brilliantly reflected in the movie too how that changed the job market and how people yeah. you know have to now basically all they believed in is kind of yeah changing and yes yeah, so I, I i don't know if you know more about that whole job market thing because i didn't get like for example the the teacher guy who then ends up being a drunk like why why do people why do they lose their job is it just because there's more qualified people coming in from the west now or like why Well, they're probably not allowed to, I mean, if if you think about it from a perspective of like, this person's influencing other minds, if they have a socialistic like viewpoint, they don't don't want that teaching. Yeah, I don't know if that was, I I would assume that that would be an issue. I didn't have time to do more research on that, but I I don't know. Well, the curriculum is completely different. Right, right. They've taught different things and taught a different background for like history i mean i don't know so you just had this older generation that was then just kind of left by the wayside because that's the vibe you get through the mm-hmm. movie right mm-hmm. like they're just what what they were what they're qualified to do is just overnight not mm-hmm. not relevant anymore well i mean look at the astronaut that ended up being the uh, cosmonaut sorry, cosmonaut <laughs> that ended up being a taxi driver I and mean, that's pretty significant yeah. change and drop you know what i mean oh uh, man some friends of ours who uh, they lived in East Germany, she said she had her dream job being an engineer, but you basically went to work. From, you knew there was no purpose to it. Like you knew everything that you were inventing and building and planning. The state didn't have the money to actually make that into a reality. Mm-hmm. And you just had a job to have a job because everybody needs to have a job, oh, okay. right? Got it. So, So the demand of demands that are created automatically by capitalism is also something I can see influencing the job market and then right. you're you're just let go because they can't afford you anymore because they don't have those uh, government subsidies. Right, because there's, well, that and then there's just no, I mean, without the capitalism part, then there's no incentive to follow through with all that stuff, right? In a way? 
What do you mean? Sorry. I'm saying if you're inventing all this stuff in in a complete socialist culture, and then as you said, then, I mean, all the stuff you're inventing doesn't get... Made, right. Yeah, because there's no, like, capitalist incentive right. even oh, to I do see, that, I right? See. On yeah. top of there also not being enough money. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's what, like, that's the good thing about capitalism is, like, there's this incentive to push forward, yeah. right? But I, also the system that we're living in now, it, it this isn't it. You know, there's so many problems right. that we have with it. And I think the movie does. Uh, was, that's so beautiful about this movie is that it doesn't condemn or ignore these 40 years of living. It's almost like a, a love letter to it. Right. But in a way that still critiques it. And that. But it doesn't ignore all this culture. Like, and especially what you said about the older generation. Mm-hmm. I would find that so hard to just. Oh, this is all now just gone, all right. these 40 years of my life that, uh, to me, were reality, and now it's changed completely. I think that's really interesting. That was like, the part of the movie that I found the most, because I think the only thing I'd really seen regarding like the fall was that food critic. What's his name? The uh, When you were the... When Anthony Bourdain went to Berlin. Yeah, and we, yeah, we saw it. So, like, I saw that episode, and it was, like, much more artistic-based, so it showed, like, how great the wall falling was and then this movie kind of showed me the opposite of like how traumatic it was for the people in Mm -hmm. that area and it was like it was such a different perspective for me that i was i was and it's all valid yeah it's it's, like it's all valid for both ways but it was just yeah it was Mm -hmm. completely fascinating to me to see because i i always had this image that like it was everybody wanted it like i didn't even think of the older people that Mm -hmm. like were there was a reason that was put in place in the first place. There was a group of people that put it there. You know what I mean? Or or at least supported it. So, I don't know. It was very... I like that aspect I of mean, the I mean, the nice thing about the movie is it doesn't take a political like stance. No. It's just here... It, it really shows the good and bad of both systems, but it's... It's like in any movie made today, it always seems like everyone has to have a stance on everything. And this movie's just like, here's what's going on. And I'm showing both sides. And here's this kid's story. That's kind of, it was really so. The movie made in 2003. It's so refreshing to see in 2019 because, yeah. like, two years after the Fox News scandal, they're now and like a movie's coming out in December about like everything's just so divisive, politically driven. Like every every even movies like it has to have a stance. You know, there's no just here's what's going on. It's you have to like pick right or left. I feel like we're in an era of. Um, news where everything is highly sensitized and like point driven, like everything has to have like has to hit you like wow, you know, like kind of like a wow factor and sell you on it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Instead they have of like to just reporting, I know, but like there's there you yeah. I get why it's there, but I'm saying at the same time, it's like there used to be a it used to be more about reporting just what was going on rather than reporting it with an opinion. And now it's like, it's almost more opinion based than what's going on in reality. Does that make sense? Um, but what you're saying is like the Fox news and the, what's the democratic version of that? The C- I don't even know that. I think people's mistake is that they call that news when it's infotainment. So it's not like a newspaper. You have to have a certain side to it like republican or democrat because that's what gets people to watch your channel and it's about getting those right, but that's sense. that's basically almost every news outlet at this point yeah like it, for tv writing yeah you know, writing too i mean you, oh. you anything you read on the internet or any kind of article it's the same thing it's all one side or the other i i don't know i don't want to like just get rid of to condemn journalism altogether i think there's plenty of news oh no but there is i mean journalism's having a little bit of a crisis right yeah but that's besides the point um so we watched this movie tabby and i both grew up in germany and we watched this when we were let's see 2003 i would have been ago, yeah. oh, a long time ago i mean when it came out right in 2003 yeah i think so it was a really big movie in germany i think it won a bunch of awards probably that year or whatever and the german academy awards <laughs> um <laughs> But I I remember this movie being a lot funnier, but I was also, I don't know, I was like eight years old. And I don't think all the heavy stuff in the movie really hits you at that age. So now watching it again, and I'm 27 now, it's, I, there's some moments in the movie, they make you laugh and they're really charming, but it's a really sad movie at the end of the day. Like It was really not, I, I just had it in my head that it's it was a comedy more than a drama and now seeing it again it's way more a drama than a comedy i mean you said the lot you were just bawling your eyes out the last 20 minutes right yeah 
Yeah. No, she's tearing <laughs> up. That? Tearing up right now. Because <laughs> it's really, it's a really depressing movie. Which I don't just, find it depressing. Really? No, I find it. I mean, maybe de- depressing is not the right word. Maybe, but it's just it's really kind of heavy. Like, give these okay, the walls coming down, and it's focusing on these people in the east whose lives are kind of turned upside down by that, and then you have this mom who's not doing well and you find out she was lying to the kids about their dad but then you know daniel blue's character he's lying to his mom the whole movie which and he can't give that up which i also don't agree with he spins his whole web of lies to keep his mom from excitement but at a certain point all these people in his life are telling him well you have to eventually tell her this is getting ridiculous because it's just getting more and more elaborate and he's filming his own tv news to show to his mom i mean i don't know is he doing the right thing there would you tell her at some point well i mean the girlfriend tells her at the end and she's fine so right. you know that which they never really acknowledge other than like he, she and then again the mom i don't know there was like a moment where the the mom said something i think when they were at the cabin about him being just like his father and the entire movie i'm thinking there especially when you find out she like is a big liar too uh, i'm like they're exactly alike she ends up like lying to him too and not telling him that her girlfriend told her the truth and like you see it in the background of her just like admiring his lie so the quote i have written down and i'll translate it too but it's something that he says in the voiceover Die DDR, die ich mir von meiner Mutter schuf, wurde immer mehr die DDR, die ich mir vielleicht gewünscht hätte. Which means, I created this version of East Germany that I would have wanted to live in, but that wasn't real. Mm. And that, to me, is so significant, especially since by the end, he, his childhood hero is running the country, right? And his version right. of East Germany. <laughs> 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 and it's And I think that moment of the mom looking at him and, it's kind of the culmination of that, of him creating this fake mm-hmm. Germany and the mom's, the mom's almost like appreciating everything that he has done for right. her, you know, and it's like this loving moment. she knows it's all because he cares so much. It's not, yeah. he's not lying in a See, to me, I think way. that he does it not only just because he cares so much, but because he feels so guilty that she, he's the reason she had the, the heart attack in the first place because she sees him like getting arrested. Mm. Like trying to like. I don't know about fight that, again. but I, I definitely also see it as self-serving because I don't doesn't really have anything else going on in his life. Like yeah. this whole thing is giving him such a purpose, yeah. and he gets so, you know, he goes from just this guy kind of moping around, going to protests, and all of a sudden it's like, oh my god, I have a purpose. I can yeah. get so involved in making this world. So yeah, I, mean, I don't. It's a I little don't. Bit of both, yeah, right? I I don't get the. I mean, to, I I guess I don't see it all in positive like for him like i i think that he's being kind of selfish and i think that he's being kind of self-serving a little hmm. so you think he should have told her earlier because he never tells her ever which yeah. i don't think is right yeah i think he should have told her earlier <laughs> i think he hmm. definitely should have but i mean at the same time like it if she would have she ends up dying anyway so she got a nice little peaceful Right. Even hmm. though it threw everybody else's lives into like disarray. <laughs> How do we feel about the mom lying to the kids? So their dad at an early age That's unacceptable. Goes to West Germany, right? Does does he flee the country or got no, a job? No, he's there no, he's there for a job um, and then just decides to stay there, right? Which I don't get what the plan was there. Right, because how are you gonna smuggle a mom and two kids over the border? Like, she, no, she was going to apply for a visa, for a travel visa. Okay. But especially if the dad's already in West Germany, they're already on high alert. Right. And then she says, oh, he sent us all these letters. You know they're reading and opening all those letters. Yeah. So what, how was she going to get of the others. kids out? The lives of others. Go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you don't, I know we know. I know pro- maybe not everyone knows. Like, East Germany was just a surveillance state. Yeah. I forget. It was one... One out of four, one out of five people like worked for the state surveilling your neighbors, basically. Yeah, like, everyone's just watching everybody. Yeah. No, it's insane. <laughs> but there's a great movie called The Lives of Others, which kind of documents that really nicely. But yeah, like if he's sending all these letters, you're right. They know they're they're not gonna grant that visa because the state knows, like, hey Yeah, also as soon as that wall came down, 
I would be over there looking for my kids. Like, I get that yeah. the dad started, like, a new family, and I, I don't have anything against that. I get it. Like, he's mourning for the loss of this it's other also family. also weird. But still, like, I would be checking in with that. <laughs> yeah. No? Stacy, you would know. be over Is there right so away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, wouldn't have, I would have found a way before that. Well, I just wonder, well, he wrote, like, a hundred letters, right? And never heard back. And I just, I wonder if in his mind, he's like, well, these people don't want anything to do with me or something. Like, that doesn't make any sense either because he, his kids are too young for them to make that the decision. The kids are too young and also the letters could have been intercepted by the state, which is a possibility yeah. that he should have considered. Hmm. Yeah. It, I don't know. I think it's tough. When you've been disconnected from your this other family for so long, and then you have your whole other life, I don't know. I think you just just like grows apart i don't know if you would be over there the second the wall comes down i know my mom would be <laughs> <laughs> yeah but he's you know and so he's <laughs> he has a wife and two kids he's probably providing for the whole household he's got a lot going on like he's not gonna be over he hasn't seen this family he in so many years he looks like he like in he looks like he completely abandoned I, I don't know i i just think that i would be there should be more of a drive to like find out what happened like, I don't think I could yeah. just, like, let go. Yeah. Like, and also, oh, I have two kids out there, but they don't matter to me. Like, they're not part right. of my life. Like, this this is an opportunity. He said he waited three years. Three years? God, I would never stop looking for my children. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. You oh, you waited a whole three years? Good it's job, all, buddy. It's also a, ch- a choice <laughs> of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take capitalist West Germany, it's a party over here over my entire family. Right, that was another another thing I had a problem with. I'm like, (laughs) like, well, yeah, I mean, that is that is weird now that I think about it. Like, you're just abandoning your whole family because it'd be like if I wanted to move somewhere and you and the two kids wouldn't be able to make that move i'm not gonna be like well too bad for you i'll Bye. see you yeah it's not <laughs> this is like not how family works <laughs> it's very weird it was a very weird that's the only part it didn't make any sense like i did, i felt like they didn't develop the father because they tried to make him too likeable, nice in the end yeah. and too likable and it was like um no no mm. that doesn't work for me and then also that made me think if she so socialist to cover up the fact that she, like or was he just trying to find a purpose in staying behind i felt like there was some relationship between how passionate she was about east germany and yeah the- maybe they also i'm sure they grew apart where he's he wants to live in the west and she's so in the socialist but she didn't really get involved in the socialist party after until, he left right until he left yeah she yeah, went through so- depression and yeah so that doesn't actually make sense at all no, that's what I'm saying. Like, is, is was that her coping mechanism? Yeah, I think that's exactly. Like, if what I'm that staying was. here, then I'm staying here. Yeah, I'm like, staying uh, here, and I'm gonna okay. get. I'm gonna get involved. Because I don't know. Let's call her up and ask. Um, <laughs> get her oh, wait, on the line. It's a fictional movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, favorite characters. I know you love the sister's boyfriend. Are they husband? Are they? They're not married, are they? They're just having kids, right? Yeah. Can I just? quick yeah. call my soapbox and advocate oh. for the, sure. the boyfriend who's <laughs> also a hilarious character but yeah, he's like, the comic relief yeah he's an idiot but who, he's who? he's like the kramer he's just yeah. there he's there he somehow has money you never see him working oh he works at burger king with her but he's oh, like he the does. manager <laughs> right well he's making way better money you know? yeah he's the manager I don't, yeah, okay. right, but can, can i just say he's about to be raising two kids He's he's the one who's cleaning up the bottle when it falls to the ground. He's paying the rent. He bought the car. He's just a solid guy. And yeah, he's a like dork, but he's the kind of person you want to build a life with. No, like it made sense to oh, me no, sure. why he was there in her life. It's just I really like how they structure his character because he is he has his shit way more together than everyone else. He makes more money than everyone else. He's just always pulling through with whatever they need. He puts up with all this family drama, but he's so low well he's so low key that you just kind of he just kind of always fades in the background right and like people like people are yelling at him and i i don't know what's his name is it reiner uh let's look it up 
Be- because I don't, he's so kind of secure with himself, right? Like he's just like in the tanning bed, all <laughs> naked, running around. He's so secure with himself and doesn't need to be flashy or the man of the house. He just kind of knows he's a boss, but he's so low key that he kind of almost gets abused for that sometimes. No, I don't know. Oh man, I don't know. But it's okay. It yeah, doesn't matter. We'll never know. Oh no, yeah, Reina. Reina. Yeah, it just just when he's like trying to piece together his like history in East Germany and Daniel Brook is being like, Danke Rainer, Rainer <laughs> like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, he's he's definitely a buffoon too though at the same time. God. <laughs> um You guys love the best friend. Yeah, we do. Oh yeah, the one that helps him make all the new stuff. He's, God, the best. he's amazing. <laughs> he's like so loyal and he's funny and just a good guy. Uh he's just like Get so excited about everything. I just love. I just love how goofy right. he is. <laughs> or like the scene where he's in front of the, he's in front of the co- Coca Cola mm. thing, and he's like just sitting there. He's like, no, we're gonna wait for the sun we're to go down. We're gonna wait for the <laughs> golden hour. So pretentious. <laughs> yeah. So that that guy Florian Lucas. Yeah, like, I've seen him in something been else. In a ton. Well, he's he has a hundred and four. Yeah, IMDb I'm like, credits. I know I've seen him in stuff. What he else was, has he been in? He was in the Grand Budapest Hotel. Yes, that's what huh. I've seen him oh, in. I don't remember now. It's just like a German actor that he does some low key Hollywood stuff. I I know he's just super involved in the the German film industry is surprisingly active and large and healthy. Like it's very like they pump out a lot of movies that you wouldn't yeah. know you wouldn't know about it here, but yeah. I can remember when we were growing up there, it was just like, there's a lot of mm-hmm. German movies, which I know not every country has that. They all just get like Hollywood, mm-hmm. Hollywood's movies shipped over there. Or in Germany, you always got a little bit of both. That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so something that I didn't notice when I first watched this movie and now rewatching it is just what an excellent movie this is. Like I want some of these like Hollywood clowns to go back to like film school and <laughs> go over this movie like like what part the okay it has voiceover that doesn't annoy the hell out of me like the voiceover is wolf good. of wall street and i'm looking at you oh my god i hate that movie <laughs> that every character has a purpose every character is in character i believe all of these relationships like i you know the sister and the brother it's, now that you say that i i remember a point that i forgot about when towards the end of the movie when the mom and the dad they meet in the hospital right it just cuts back to daniel blue and they're like well they've been in there for like two hours talking any other movie that would be like this big dramatic scene between the wife and ex-husband right and it'd be this monologue between them i can hear the piano music right now but you just (laughs) But this movie decides not to do that, and you just you don't need it. Like there's the fat is cut away from this movie. It's pretty efficient. Well, yeah. Also because Daniel Brewer is the point of view character, and he's not in that room. Right, it makes sense you too. Know? But I'm saying most other movies, you would it wouldn't matter. You'd mm-hmm. have this. Oh, there's we're gonna have a big dramatic scene here, and the mom's gonna cry. Oh, I didn't want to go to the West. I don't. <laughs> I just like I saw it all happening. <laughs> But like, I just wanted a better life for you, and you didn't want to come to the West with me. I don't. Yeah, but no, <laughs> this movie decides not to do that for the better. And like everything has a payoff, and every reference comes back later. Like they're talking about, oh, we need the money because we finally got our trabi, and then Raina buys a trabi later on. So that comes back. Which, if you don't know what a trabi is, it was this East German look. It looks a little bit like a mini, like an old yeah, mini. It does. But it was like the East German and just Soviet cars in general are notorious for just being absolute garbage. It basically has the engine power of a hamster wheel. But the Trabi... Yeah. The was- Atomic Blonde is not an accurate representation. <laughs> <laughs> the Trabi was like the Cadillac of Soviet cars. And you, you had to wait... It, it was like Tesla today. Like when Tesla first came out and people had to wait like three years to get their Tesla 3. Like that was the Trabi. You'd have yeah. to wait like three to five years. You put a deposit down. You like waited for your car. Because it was that was the hot shit of the Soviet cars. But even that car is like garbage now if you look back on it. They're just poorly constructed. They had no power whatsoever. But 
Yeah, it's like a fun little fact. It's this infamous East German Soviet vehicle. I think there's a whole episode on Top Gear about it, too. It's the Trabi and the Vadborg? What was the other car? Oh, God, I don't know. Uh, I just know that I know the Trabi is... That's the most famous one. Well, and then the other thing I had written down for how excellent this movie is, is the theme of space. And it's never... It never hits you over the head with it, and it also never lets go of it. Like, the astronaut comes back later and then. Mm -hmm. The Zandmann scene, is, I thought, was so cool. Because in the beginning, they have the astronaut in space with Zandmann, which is a little doll. Were you, little... were you okay with the Zandmann, Stacey? I know he terrifies you. You scare me a little. <laughs> <laughs> it's the chin beard. <laughs> so Zandmann, as you guessed, is the Sandman. And it's this huge... The kids show in Germany. You just go to bed with it. Yeah, stop motion... Yeah, this weird stop motion. I, they still do it today, you know? I think it, so. It's just... Old episodes. It's just as a little kid in Germany, you watch... It's, I don't know, maybe like a five-minute little Sandman thing, and then you go to bed. It's just like this tradition. You grow up with the Sandman. And so he is wildly featured in this movie. But we showed Stacy the Sandman for the first time a few months ago, and she was terrified of him. So Very scary. <laughs> He's a nice... Very creepy. Very nice man. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't have the same reaction. Maybe I just don't have the memories you guys have built around him. So <laughs> I'm just looking at him from a different perspective. But yeah, you're right. The theme is really yeah, good. Yeah, and then it, when he comes back later to visit the kids, they're watching Zantman and it's the astronaut mm -hmm. episode. It's the astronaut and I'm episode. I'm like, that's brilliant. They send her ashes off in a, in a rocket. little rocket. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's just a nice little theme every, that carries Everything through. is thought out. Everything has... It's just brilliant. It's just such a solid... 10 movie. out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> uh, I also just wanted to mention the music in this movie. By Jan Tiersen. Jan Tiersen. <laughs> who is the same guy that did Amelie, which is, you know, one of the great soundtracks. Yeah, it is. And they reuse one of the songs from Amelie. Mm -hmm. Actually, now what? Amelie the came slow out before, piano right? song. Oh, yeah. Amelie came out two years before this movie. I looked this guy up. He hasn't done... So this he did Amelie and Goodbye Lenin, and he hasn't done a major movie since then. He does all these yeah, documentaries and short I films, which is too. really weird because his music is gorgeous. I, I don't understand. What went wrong? I don't know if it was something that went wrong or he just chose not Maybe to do anything else. Maybe he just doesn't else. want to do it. Yeah, you never mm. know. But yeah, the, the music is great. It just adds to this movie so much. It's this beautiful piano music. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about Helmut Kohl, who's mentioned in this oh, in the yeah. very beginning. He's. Do you you remember? Growing oh, I remember up with Kohl. That, right? Yeah, he died he was a this few years ago. Big politician growing up in Germany. He was the chancellor from eighty two to ninety eight, so almost yeah, two a long decades. time. Um, just, just one of those, like, fixtures in your wait, life. Was, was Merkel after him? I think Or was there so. someone in between? I don't remember. No. Hmm. I don't remember now. Okay. We'll have to Google it. Um, but he is featured in, like, the news clips that mm -hmm. they show in the movie. Um, and he was actually instrumental in creating the European Union in 93 through mm -hmm. the Maastricht Treaty, uh, which is just such a vision to have. And I just want to explain this really quickly because I hear um, people often confuse the UN and the EU. And they're like, oh, the EU doesn't oh, really? do anything. I've yeah, never I've heard, heard that. that. <laughs> and the EU has its roots in all these, what is that called? Like a congregation or like for coal and steel mm -hmm. so that everybody could keep eyes on everybody else and trade routes were monitored and everybody mm -hmm. was working together because those are the things that you need to wage war. And after World War II, Europe right. was kind of over being like dying all the time in war yeah i mean if you know the history of europe they were just it's just wars all the time and the european union is what has led us to live in this yeah. really peaceful modern society and also get rid of all these like taxes over borders and all these different types well, of money sim simplifies and can, imports yeah. exports if you're you know if you're in france and you're an EU citizen, you can go to Germany and you're fine because it's all part of the EU. Yeah, and it's yeah, and it's a great thing. Mm. And go f yourself, UK. No, just kidding. <laughs> well, it, it's like if if all fifty states were just independent here and yeah, there wasn't a government, it would be annoying. a shit show. And right, like I wouldn't be able to. Oh, you want to go to Las Vegas? Well, 
you can't just hop across the border. You got to fill out all this paperwork and because you're just like you're going into a new country. Like that's kind of what the EU is for Europe is this just, hey, let's let's combine. Let's make life easy because we're all these little countries and we're all right next to each other. Like, let's make life. Let's put us all under an umbrella here. Yeah. Watch, and I was just watching you, England. Joking about England. I'm sure everybody <laughs> over there is great. I hope they get their Brexit act together. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I want to talk about that. You shit show. My middle-aged father is sending me Brexit memes, and I didn't even know he knew what a meme was. So <laughs> that's how far it's gotten. <laughs> what do you call a meme in German? It's like a meme. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. <laughs> Probably just call it a meme. <laughs> Have you seen my meme? <laughs> my meme? I don't know. Um... <laughs> What else? Anything else about this yes, movie? The, what you got? The song that the kids sing, Unsere Heimat, Our oh, Home. Oh, yeah. I looked it up on YouTube, and it's actually a gorgeous song. Like, the lyrics... It's it's like East German Boy Scout, right? I is think that, so, right? The Pioneers? Basically I don't know what, what the it is. Pioneers were. They have their own little song. Um, but that... It, just the song in itself is, is so beautiful. And then in the comments section... I remember singing this song. Yeah, everybody's like, oh, I remember learning this in school. <laughs> and like, oh, what a beautiful... It's it's like people being sad and nostalgic and missing... It, it's almost like having grief for a part of your life that it's never going to come back. And like mm. a community and a culture that sure. is lost forever. And it, just having that documented in this comment section, I thought was so interesting of people. Historians 200 years from now will look at the YouTube comment section <laughs> and we will understand <laughs> the world better. <laughs> and I don't think, I think there's a term in German called um, Ostalgie, Ost meaning East, so like East mm. nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't want to throw that around because I don't think this movie romanticizes this no, regime or way of life, but it also doesn't but it also validates in a way of like, yeah, this is the life that we had and not everything in it was terrible. Yeah. And I was talking to Stacy about this movie this morning. She's like, I don't know what to say because, you know, she didn't grow up in Germany and she didn't watch this movie when she was little. And I know you didn't like, you said you didn't like a lot of the characters, right? Like you don't like Daniel Bruce. Like you don't, no, right? I don't like him. And why not? I, um, I, I don't like his motivation. I told you, I think he's self-serving. I, I just, there's an... But he's uh, not all self-serving, right? No, but he's just, I don't, he, he doesn't, he's like constantly yelling at other people. Like he gets mad at his sister. He was treating like the, her boyfriend like crap. Mm -hmm. And it to me, like just, it, it, he doesn't always like appreciate, he's like, he's so wrapped up in himself mm -hmm. that like, like his girlfriend's like trying to like do practice for a huge test. that's like really important to her. Cause she's, that's what she's been there doing the entire time. And he's like, I gotta go. I gotta go, you know, get some more jars. To, like he sees the pickle jar. <laughs> get some more jars. <laughs> like, <laughs> Mocha figs. It's like, I don't know. It's just like this aspect of his character that I just like, it's unattractive. It's unattractive. There's like a lack of loyalty to other people in his life that are mm. showing such loyalty. Like his friend is so amazing. He's like falling asleep while the guy is like so excited to show him his video. I don't know. Oh, there's that like video sucks. I, I know it sucks, but it's not the point. It's just like this. It, Brilliant. It, it's just like this, <laughs> this selfishness that runs through him that kind of annoys me. Do you like his sister? Um, his sister, I like. She has her own, but problems. she's kind of selfish too. Like both of them are. And then, like, I didn't understand. What's wrong with the sister? Who's going? On? Well, the sister I didn't like because, like, she's she, not being very supportive. She's not being very supportive, but at the same time, like, I understand her viewpoint. But her viewpoint that the reason I understand her viewpoint, but she, her viewpoint is very selfish. It's like I just want to live my life the way I want to live yeah. my life, well, and it's so like I want to put you. my. Well, I'm not. I'm not denying that, but it's not a likable. It's like the girlfriend. Right. I like her role. Yeah, because she's constantly like, "This isn't right. This isn't fair to do." To you know, everything in her motivation to me is like positive. She's supportive, yet at the same time, she like puts her foot down. Like, she's I like her character a lot. I like the friend's character a lot. I do not like the dad. I do not like the mom. I do not like the brother. And you I don't do not like the sister. mom. No, oh are you? Oh my god, you don't like anybody. <laughs> no, I don't like the mom. Why don't you like? Oh, because she of the like to the, I don't respect. Well, they all kind everybody. Of, they're not perfect people, I yeah, guess. That's what I'm saying, I don't know. But it, it's she's not a bad. Oh, person. no empathy from Stacy. No, dude. Off with their head. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying, like, 
Well, the sister, I, 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 thought... I, I let me rephrase this. I like the characters' developments throughout the movie. Like, I like, I like. It was interesting to watch, but it was not to me. Like, I wouldn't want any of these people in my life. Hmm. That kind of. I think you have some of these people in your life. I do. <laughs> and I'm trying very hard to weed them out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sister I thought was, I actually really loved the sister and all the hairstyles that she went through. Like, my mom had all those hairstyles. I, Even the I, one at the end, I'm like, this, oh my God, it's so it's horrible. This short, it's like this the 90s fro. The, the, what is that called? It's this, wh- it's this white girl fro. That's yeah. what I call it. Like, her mom definitely her had mom was some old that. pictures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's terrible With hair. The big glasses. It's terrible hair. But I thought the sister illustrated so well how you you can't go back especially when you're that young like i can't go back to putting my kid in like plastic diapers and wearing these clothes and like doing this and they're all living in this tiny apartment and she's now pregnant again and like she's like i don't want to do this anymore like i can't yeah you know just to move on with her life for sure which that was interesting but you know that changed between the boyfriend being from the west and trying Mm. to fit in with these people in the east (laughs) because they're pretending it's East Germany, mm-hmm. and then the son being almost stuck there in a way. Like yeah. he's doing it for his mom, but like Stacy said, right. he's also kind of doing it for himself. Yeah. And then the and then the sister kind of being in between all that. Um, but yeah, I thought that was well done. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not saying that it wasn't well done, and I'm not saying that in in a perspective oh, of like characters, like the character development, like the characters and I, I believe the characters, which is why I think I have like a physical reaction and not like a physical right. reaction to them in the sense of like, I don't like the mom because I don't respect the decision she made to like lie to her kids and like hide the letters. And like, like that to me is just so self-serving in itself. Like she has to be the center of their kids, her kids world when even though she took part of it away from them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, as a mother, that doesn't seem right. Like, I could not do that to my children. Um, and I get it was to protect them, but at the same time, I feel like it was more to protect her, which is why she, like, felt so bad, to, like, why it took her so long to tell them. And then, like, the the sister, I, I, I probably, like, I dislike the least because I do respect what she di- she's doing, but sometimes it's just, like, the way she goes about it is very selfish. You know what I mean? Like, it's not... but. In that situation, would I react similar? I don't know. Never been in that situation. Right. Well, I just, uh, but the I think but when you have a kid, it also main, it changes everything. Yeah, right? no, it yeah. does. And yeah, but the main guy, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> oh, and let's talk about the football really quickly because uh, I feel yes. like what this movie goes through of Germany she means winning soccer, Germany <laughs> winning the World Cup in that year, nineteen ninety. And then um, when did we host the World Cup? 2006. Was it 2006? It was, I felt that again. Remember it like it was yesterday, 2006. (laughs) Just a spirit of patriotism that you've never felt before and how Mm -hmm. we make jokes about how the World Cup is so important to Europeans, but there is so much culture associated with it that it's not just a, it's not just a game. I'm, I'm trying to find the American equivalent to this. I don't know if they're... Like Independence Day, or I don't just know. around an event. I don't know, and it, it's weird. It's like this one sports I think it's event. Probably Fourth of July. Maybe it would be like the closest thing we have, because that's like the one day where like everybody comes together regardless of anything. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. And I feel like soccer does that. Like I saw in the movie that that how how it united both sides. Like right. there was like a well the the, the movie so. The German soccer team wins, and then everyone is waving their flags, and there's fireworks, and it's really the only time you're going to wave around a German flag. Right. It's not like here, where you just put a flag in your pickup truck, and on every <laughs> corner of the street, and I mean, American flags are everywhere here, like, just in case anyone is forgetting what country they're in, but it's just not a thing in Europe, in Germany especially, like, you, you wave the flag around when there's, like, reason to celebration, but there's not... There's not a flagpole on every corner, yeah. you know. It's just way more rare of a sight. And so I don't... Yeah, and in 2006, that was the first time I saw people actually saying, like, being allowed to say they're proud to right. be German. And like, oh, we're hosting this and we're like, everybody's a guest in our country. And Well, it's just, and you know, with good reason, there was a long time of shame, right? 
because Germany did some pretty bad stuff not too long ago. Yeah, but I think I'm at that point right now where I'm like, yeah, we documented all these lives right. that are being lost, and that's why you're that's why we're the villains in all your movies. But Americans, like the nationalism here, was a huge culture shock when I first came here, and mm. honestly, like sometimes I just want to be like, well, look at your life, like look at your own history, like you you're right. We're not that much different. Like, you, you just yeah. keep track of all these cultures no, no, and no, people you that not, you're, like, you not, a, not only did you not keep track, you literally didn't put them in your history books. Like, right. you diminished, you, like, completely took sections out of how you actually got things and how many people were massacred. Sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> so I'm not saying I took a yeah. I took a class last semester about Native American history and just was completely like my eyes were opened to stuff that I knew occurred but they didn't realize like just how, how organized the cover up mm. how organized yeah. yeah exactly how organized the cover up was in our bo- in our history books and how like growing up what i was taught versus what actually occurred yeah it like to this day i'm like are you kidding me like it, you, we really need yeah. to like and, and I, think- I know it's changing slowly and it's like starting to be you know fixed but it's still people are still fighting to fix it and it's like you massacred people you literally paid 50 cents for a head and I think Scalp. that's the difference where that is being taught to us in school every year and over and over and mm-hmm. like we are very familiar with our own history of Nazi Germany and th- I think that's the difference that in the US there's that kind of oh. lack of looking at your own right you learn when you when you know about something you can reflect on your your history if you actually know what happened and not make those mistakes again it's nice to see that it's starting to be put back cuz mm-hmm. hopefully we won't you know, with all the stuff that's occurring right now and just like all the racial issues we're having again for the first time and not for the first time, but that, that, that are so hypersensitive right now. It's nice to see that we are putting that stuff in place because maybe we can actually learn from it and not make a, a mistake again, mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. Stacey for president. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't like politics. <laughs> you can't afford it. What? You can't afford a campaign. Anything you want. This is America. <laughs> this is America. Back to capitalism, full circle. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you want to live in a socialist country? Oh hell no! Nope. No way. You don't want to share your car with the family next no. door and have a sign-up no, sheet no, for? No. <laughs> nope. I like variety. I don't want them to tell me which pickles I have to eat. <laughs> <laughs> the pickles. No, and in all seriousness, I get there's flaws to cap. There's flaws to every system, but I do. I think capitalism is definitely the way to go. Not that we can't regulate the capitalism and there's not stuff to fix, but there, no, hell no. Socialism, communism, get out of here. I just don't know. Wait, you want to live? You want to live in East Germany? No, (laughs) but I I don't know. I just, maybe I've just been watching too many like videos on YouTube about it, but just trying to understand all these different systems. What are the flaws? What are the... Yeah. I feel like a lot of ideas are great in theory, but then when you go to put them in place, there are human nature that jacks it all up. That's how I feel about capitalism and That's, greed and well, consumer culture. Well, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. There's there's definite issues with capitalism. Look how they've taken the medical world and this like right. capitalized in it like on people's lives and what kind of insurance, you know, like what kind of care they get. It's 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 horrifying to watch. But we're also a really young country and we have a lot, you know, in comparison to, you know, a lot of these European was, countries mm-hmm. that have, that have gotten a lot more with figured regulation, out. I think yeah, there's, there's a lot more regulation that, that needs point. to occur. And it, it, you know, it's geniuses. Our forefathers were at, at certain points of creating the, you know, creating the laws and the base. We have to take that and mm-hmm. put into changes that need to occur to monitor it more effectively. That's all. I think a good example of this is, um, the things that Amazon is doing to its workers here, mm-hmm. it, they aren't able to do it in places like Germany where people are protesting and right. be like, no, 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 you can't like treat your workers. <laughs> like yeah. Amazon yeah. can't operate the same way it does here that it does in other countries. Yeah, right. What's a, and that's the thing. It's like, it, I think people forget. I mean, I know we're, we're a huge nation and we're like so powerful, but the thing is, is that we're still so young. I mean, these growing Maybe. pains, or these growing pains that we're going through <laughs> right now, like the, the fact that we're going through them without having it turn into a civil war is and is 
in itself impressive because that's what happened in a lot of other countries. So we just, we got to, you know, we got to grow. I just don't think there's a single pure socialist or capitalist society that has worked out long right. term, right? Right. It's just always failed. So, well, coming back to the, the acquaintance we have who lived in East Germany, she said, the sense of community and events and like, oh, the whole neighborhood gets together to stage this play or do this. She she hasn't felt like that in right. in the new Germany. Sure. And I think that's something that comes through in the movie too, how they kind of, like the neighborhood feels more like a community in East Germany and like, oh, sure. they get together to write these funny letters to or petitions. and. Well, it also has to do with, you know, in Western culture, you're... It's more individual, yeah, individualistic. Yeah. So then, that's where that divide is between community and individual. Oh, something that actually the movie touches on really briefly, and that I um, that I googled is the idea that when prostitution was now legal in East Germany, and you had access to this um, the pornography industry, there oh, yeah. was this big sexual revolution in East Germany, but that actually didn't occur. Huh. To them, it was still something that was so private, and so right. it, it was just two completely different um, takes on human sexuality. And the movie shows Danny and Boo's character like going over there to what in like a sex like a shop porn or shop, something. Yeah. Um, but that's there. You didn't suddenly have like sex shops everywhere, or like right. it was still su uh, such a difference between yeah. the two cultures. So I thought that was interesting. Oh, and on that note, of sex shops. <laughs> We got anything else? You want to wrap this up? That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to repeat myself. There's a new website up, and you need to check it out. What's it called, Sam? It's called modernlifepodcast.com. Wow. And you don't have to put the www dot in case you didn't know that. <laughs> in case there's any 90-year-old women listening out there. I hope there are. <laughs> Email us at modern... Dear modern, modern life... life. <laughs> I very much enjoy your audio program. <laughs> They're apparently all in London, all our <laughs> senior listenership. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're on Instagram. We're not on Facebook. Screw Facebook. Well, we're sort of on Facebook because Facebook owns Instagram. Huh. You didn't know that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, there you go. Instagram, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. Google Podcasts. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. boom, boom Website. Boom. Am I missing anything? Email us, modernlifepod at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. That's all I got, man. Yeah, happy 30 year. Woo! Happy freedom. Happy <laughs> 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 yes. Thanks for listening, guys. See you soon. Bye. 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 Freedom! Please leave that part in. <laughs>